Hello, hello. Welcome to Wisdom Talk tonight. I'm Dr. Todd Williams uh, joining you and I'm glad you could be with me. I'm going to be talking to you about some important subjects, so stay with me. I'm going to get a few moments for everyone to jump on and join. Come on in tonight. I'm going to talk with you about why are so many offended today? Why are so many offended today? Well, I'm uh, standing in tonight for my spiritual father, Dr. Paul Kreitz. I'm one of his spiritual sons, and I'm Dr. Todd Williams uh, from South Carolina. I'm glad you could join me tonight. Good evening, Nancy. I welcome a few of you as you come in tonight. Drop in the chat stream where you're watching from. Give me a thumbs up, a heart. Uh, let me know you're watching, and I'll be glad to... Hey, Jeff, good to... Good to see you tonight. So I'm going to be talking to you about why are so many offended tonight. I'm going to be giving an update on my spiritual father, Dr. Paul Kreitz. And I uh, also want to let you know some things of what's happening and what's going on through the rest of this year and into 2021 with Purpose International. Uh, so glad last night to uh, have uh, Apostle Arlen Smith. He was joining us last night here on wisdom talk really enjoyed what uh arlen talked about with you hey i see robert grimes greg davis good to see you good evening i see my beautiful wife april glad you all could join me tonight so yeah i'm gonna be talking to you about why so many are offended maybe share this maybe you know someone that's offended maybe they're offended with you i don't know uh <laughs> bring them on and let me let me talk with them for just a little bit tonight uh so yeah i'm standing in tonight glad to be here with you uh, standing in for my spiritual father dr paul kreitz and also standing in for angel tonight angel had a long day uh in care and looking after dr kreitz uh, so she asked me to come on tonight and speak with you and i am uh, very grateful for this opportunity and thankful and appreciative as well. So <clears throat> I want to give you uh, some updates um, of what's going on with my spiritual father in just a little bit. And um, also we've got some, some offers for you. I see Kathleen, good to see you. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about uh, why so many are offended and I'm going to talk to you um, starting from John chapter 8 tonight. Hey, Lenore, good to see you as well. I'm talking to you from John chapter 8 tonight. In John chapter 8, we find that there is a woman that's been caught in adultery. And I won't keep you long tonight. This woman caught in adultery, uh, she is brought to Jesus by a group of of religious leaders and as they bring her in uh it says that the scribes and pharisees brought to him a woman that was taken in adultery uh, and when they had set her in the midst uh, they said master this woman has been taken in adultery in the very act you know i've always had questions about this story in the bible i always wondered if she was caught in the very act where is the man why wasn't he brought in it says, they said to Jesus, now in the law of Moses, it is commanded that such a person should be stoned. And what do you say? We find that Jesus, he does one of the most interesting things here. Now, Jesus was in the midst of teaching in the temple when this uh, story began to unfold. And Jesus did not answer them right off. You know, he stooped down. The Bible says that he, with his finger, he began to write in the dirt. He began to write in the ground. Uh, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And he acted as if he did not hear them. Interesting. So they continued to ask him, and, and he lifted up himself. And this is what Jesus said in verse 7. He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Let him cast the first stone. I find this uh, fascinating of what Jesus is about to do. Stay with me. 
It says, then he stooped down again and began to write on the ground. And verse nine is very important here. If you're following along with me in the scripture, it says, and they which heard it being convicted in their own conscience, being convicted in their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning with the eldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. So I'm going to talk to you about two things tonight. I'm going to talk to you about offenses, but I want to talk to you also about your conscience, about your conscience. You know, uh, this past week, I began to teach on peace. And there's nothing like having peace. Uh, the Bible tells us that we can have perfect peace. Matter of fact, we can have a peace that surpasses our understanding. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, he said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Something that I found personally is there is no price for peace in my life. There's no price that I can put on peace. Peace is something that I simply have to receive. I can't buy it or purchase it. I have to simply receive it. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter four that we can make prayers and requests and thanksgiving to God. And he says that the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard our hearts and our mind by Christ Jesus. There's something about peace that I can receive and I can receive it from God. The Bible tells us that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most important things to me in this life is to have peace in my heart and peace in my mind. And there is nothing like having peace in your conscience. Something unsettling began to happen here in John chapter 8. There was an accusation that was happening with a woman that literally could have cost her her life here, saying that she should be stoned to death. When you begin to look at what is happening here, they, the crowd of uh, scribes and Pharisees, they brought this woman to Jesus, not because they wanted to stone her, but because they wanted to have something to accuse Jesus of. They were testing Jesus out. Jesus being, of course, all wise and all knowing, he knew exactly how to deal with this situation. As they began to present their case, Jesus acted as if he paid them no attention. But then he made a statement to them. And that statement in verse 7, it, it was so loud on the inside of them that it spoke to their conscience. And the Bible says that they were convicted in their own conscience. What is a conscience? What is a conscience? I began to study this early this morning. This has been something of my uh, study of late about the conscience. The conscience is a, a faculty that is within the soul of man. Everybody has a conscience, whether they're sinner, saint, uh, born again, uh, not born again. Don't, they don't, maybe they don't even know who they are. Everyone has a conscience. What is that? It is a faculty in my soul that is able to distinguish what is both good and bad, both good and bad. Matter of fact, to, to take this further, it is the faculty within the soul of man uh, to be able to question. Thank you for joining me tonight. If you're just coming on, I'm talking to you about tonight, why are so many offended? And I'm talking about the conscience of man. So I'm glad you could be with me. A faculty within the soul of man that God placed in every person to be able to question. See, it is the conscience of a man that begins to, to call one's own conduct into question. And this is, this is what I began to see that Jesus in John 8, when he said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Jesus was able to speak through all of this situation 
And where they came to bring accusation uh, or a questioning to him, Jesus laid the question back into their own soul. And they began to question even their own actions because the Bible said that they were convicted in their own conscience. See, that tells me something. They began to call into, into question their own conduct. What am I doing here? And it says they began to leave one by one from the eldest, even to the least. <clears throat> so I want you to, I want you to let that ruminate inside of you some and just think about that, that when Jesus spoke, he spoke to their conscience. This is something that we have to learn how to do is to speak to the conscience of man. What Jesus spoke, he didn't say it with a loud tone, but it was so loud within their conscience that they began to make a personal decision to leave. And they left off the idea of not only stoning her, but trying to be, bring accusation against Jesus. This is something that we have to begin to consider within our own conscience is are or am I living uh, in agreement with my conscience? Am I living in agreement with my conscience? So it's very important um, that not only I know the voice of the Holy Spirit and know the voice of my human born again spirit, but I also have to listen to the voice of my conscience. Now, is that the voice of reason? Is that the voice of logic? No. I believe that God placed within every man, within his soul, the ability to know what is right and what is wrong. Now, a man can lie to himself. Uh, he can lie to someone else. And you know, I've found myself even in conversation with other people when I have known they were lying. And I just simply looked at them and I said, you know, look, you're not lying to me. Uh, you're lying to yourself because I don't believe you. So uh, you're just simply trying to convince yourself because I'm not convinced of what you're telling me. See, there's something that within the conscience of a man that he knows, he knows when something's right and when something's wrong. If I had time tonight, I would go into the book of Romans and talk about how the, that God already set this uh, within nature uh, and within the nature of man, that he uh, knows already knows the law of God. So uh, am I, this is the important question tonight, am I living in agreement with my own conscience? So that's what happened with these people that brought the woman before Jesus and accused her of adultery. They were not even in agreement with their own conscience. When they carried this out, their conscience was not in agreement with it. And Jesus was able to craft the perfect word for the perfect moment. You know, there's nothing like having a right word at the right time. This was a due, a due word in due season for these people because they were convicted in their conscience. Something I'm finding that is becoming prevalent today, and the reason that I'm talking about this with you is because I'm finding that our society, just like this case in John chapter 8, society is pushing people to live uh, beyond or against their own conscience. Let me say that again. Society is pushing people to live beyond or against their own conscience. Mm. I'm just going to let that settle in for just a minute. I feel like the Holy Spirit just said, just let that settle in for just a minute. Society is pushing people. to not live in agreement with their conscience. So that was be what was being pushed before Jesus here. This woman's being pushed in, into this situation with them. 
Maybe she was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, where was the man? You know, it takes two to tango, I always heard. Um, anytime, here's what I found. Anytime that I have made a decision in my life and when I went either against my conscience or without my conscience, uh, it went bad or either later I had regrets about uh, what I did or what I said or the decision that I made. And that's why this is important. Uh, the, the conscience of man has been given to him, not just to question life, but to question his own conduct. Um, I've got to be together. I've got to be together. Yes, Jeff, you have to live in agreement with your conscience. I've got to be together with or in agreement with my conscience. That's really what the word uh, conscience there means in uh, the Greek in John chapter 8. It means to be together with what I know or to be together with what I see. I, I've got to be in agreement. There's got to be a, an agreement inside of me with what I perceive is right or wrong here. Why am I saying this? Because this is a very important hour in our world. You know, I don't, I don't need to sit and explain to anyone tonight uh, about 2020 and, and what it's been like. I'm sure everyone has had so many varied experiences in this year. But it's going to be very important, uh, not only now, but in the days to come, to listen to your conscience. Uh, the world is speaking very loudly. You know, everything is, is screaming and vying for your attention, whether it's through social media, uh, television, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Everything is wanting attention. Uh, and in a, in a loud world, uh, it's not only hard to hear the voice of God, but it becomes difficult to even hear your own conscience. You know, I prefer to have a quiet life. I prefer to have peace in my mind and peace uh, even in my understanding. So I've got to begin to listen to my conscience. I've got to hone in on creating a quiet life. Um, this is something I, I, I believe that the church has failed to do and I'm not down on a church. I'm just saying this is what I believe that some of where we've fallen short is training people how to listen to their conscience. Um, this is something that, that God instilled inside of you. Um, you know, I found this with my children at a very early age. Uh, even before they learned to talk, they already knew how to lie. Nobody had to teach them that. You know, it's like uh, you leave the cookie jar on the counter and uh, you see the lid off and there's cookie crumbs laying everywhere. And uh, you look at the little child and say, um, did you get a cookie? Mm -mm. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. I didn't get a cookie. Before they can even talk, they'll fly. No, no one had to teach them that. It's the same way with a conscience. The conscience is there. The Bible tells us uh, a conscience can be seared. Um, people cannot be listening to their conscience. Obviously, obviously, the people that brought the woman before Jesus, uh, they they knew inside of them, this ain't something ain't right about this. Listen to what I'm telling you right here. Some of you are hearing that on the inside of you about things that are happening in the world. Something ain't right about this. Uh, don't, don't shut that off. Don't shut that down. Um, so let me move on here. Because <coughs> there's, a, there's a, a thing that's happening in the world that I find is happening everywhere. There are so many people that are offended. I mean, 
there may be people that come through this broadcast tonight and listen to what I'm talking about and get offended. I've had people get offended with me just because I talk about spiritual fathering or because they don't understand my relationship with my spiritual father. Uh, I mean, people <laughs> people get offended about anything nowadays. I mean, even if you don't wave to them or say hello. Um, I want to look at one other verse of scripture and then I, I'll be done for tonight, all right? I won't keep you much longer. And then I'm going to give you an update about my spiritual father as well. So glad you could be with me tonight. I'm so glad to be here with you. Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24. This is the Apostle Paul when he was presenting his case before Felix. In verse 16, he said, And herein do I exercise myself to always uh, have a conscience that is void of offense toward God and toward man. He said, I exercise myself. Listen to this now. I exercise myself to always have a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards men. You know, I sat and meditated and was thinking about this verse of scripture and I thought, man, what a difficult task uh, in today's society. People are so easily offended nowadays. I mean, even by the smallest matter, how could you have a conscience that would be void of offense towards God and man. So this led me to some questions. You know, if you want, I learned this from Dr. Murdoch, uh, my spiritual father's spiritual father. If you want answers, then you're going to have to ask questions. And I find it interesting that the conscience is a faculty within man to ask questions. So here's my question concerning this. Um, Will I offend people? Yes, I will. Will I offend people without even knowing it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I want you to be able to, to free yourself and to free your conscience from these things. Because there are people that are going to get offended with you and they will never communicate it. They're, I mean, they're just not going to say it. Um, there will be disruptions in your relationships. You know, over the next couple of weeks, uh, during Christmas and New Year's and this time of the year, uh, a lot of you may see family that you don't normally see. And uh, sometimes in the midst of family, there seems to be the occasion for people to get offended or hold offenses in a greater measure probably because of familiarity. But uh, many times people will never communicate an offense. And the only way that you will be able to know is they'll avoid you. Sometimes people will avoid you. Um, they may express disapproval or you may even get what they call the cold shoulder. Um, I don't know if you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. Um, it's very important that we learn how to communicate. Jesus said, if someone's offended with you, uh, or if you're offended with your brother, he says, go to that person. Uh, he says, if they won't listen to you, um, then take two or three. One of the things that I find interesting in all of this is in Christianity, one of the, the number one selling books a couple of years ago uh, was about offenses and how that uh, we can be baited by Satan uh, into offenses. And I think it's rather sad that we're having to teach Christian people how to not be offended. You know, the early church, uh, you know, they were being fed to lions, crucified, um, stoned, flogged, beaten, uh, persecuted for their faith. And we're trying uh, just to to learn how not to be offended. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you're going to talk about Jesus, you're going to be offended. The Bible tells us that the cross is an offense. Uh, so I've already had to cross this uh, bridge in my mind to where I know that I'm going to offend people simply. It's just going to happen. So um, trying to walk around and not offend anybody, I mean, you're just going to have to lock yourself up in your house uh, and not talk to anybody. So 
uh, going on here. Should I be controlled by others who are so easily offended? Uh, there's some people that, I mean, they just have an easily offended nature. Um, my, my conscience has to be clear. That's the point that I'm talking to you about. My conscience has to be clear. I have to have a clear conscience uh, that I did not set out to offend someone. Now, have I done that in the past? More than likely, yes. Um, but I have to know that when I'm doing something, I'm not doing it uh, for the purpose to offend. You know, sometimes I'm just sharing my own opinion and people get offended by your opinion nowadays. Uh, if I've offended someone by simply being me, um, then that offense belongs to them and it doesn't belong to me. Let me say that again. If I have offended someone for simply being myself, then uh, the, the offense doesn't belong to me. It belongs to them. That's very important of uh, whose ownership it's in. Because if someone's offended with me for simply being me, uh, then my conscience is clear. But theirs isn't because they have an offense toward me and they're not willing to go proper channels or communicate properly. You know, most of the, the, the greatest problems you will ever have in life are with people. Um, you know, I told God years ago, I said, you know, God, you you seem very easy to love uh, because you are love, but people are not. Uh, but you didn't just tell me to love you. You told me to love others as I have loved you. Uh, you know, this is my commandment that you love one another. Human relationships, as my spiritual father taught me, relationships are the most fragile thing on earth. They are the, they have to be handled with such delicacy. But yet at the same time, I must be free uh, to be me as well. So can I avoid offenses? No, you cannot avoid them. Jesus said offenses will come. They will come. Uh, our society has become very narcissistic. It has become very self-centered. And the more uh, self-centered society becomes, it will not allow, listen to me real closely, it will not allow others to hold opinions or beliefs or even ideas that differ from themselves without taking an offense. This is why everyone is offended with each other. This is why we have a political correct environment uh, in uh, our world now is because people have become afraid to express themselves without creating offense. This is very immature. You know why? Because I can have a dialogue with someone who doesn't hold the same opinions or beliefs uh, and I'm not offended by that. You know, that's, that's their freedom to do, at least here in America. If your ideas are not the same as mine, then okay. Uh, if your beliefs are not the same as mine, okay. Now you may say, well, well, Todd, they need to believe like you do. Well, of course, I believe that they need to believe like I do. That's, that's my opinion, of course. But uh, do I set out to offend? No. I'm not going to set out to offend even if someone uh, has a different take on life. Matter of fact, I don't want to be surrounded by people who uh, simply think like I think because if they think all think like I think then I won't think any different you know when I met my spiritual father Dr. Paul Christ uh, he said what are you looking for in a relationship with me and I said well I can tell you that in a real easy nutshell uh, I want to be around someone who knows what I don't know uh, someone who's been where I haven't been uh, and someone who's done what I haven't done. Uh, and all three of those things I found in him. Um, <clears throat> because I knew that 
he thought differently because he talked differently. I believe that we should talk differently because we do think differently. And in that, I want to be someone who listens to my conscience. I want to do not only what's right by the Lord, but I also have to do what is right by my conscience. I believe that we can literally sin against ourselves when we do not listen to our own conscience. So in conclusion tonight with that, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want you to, enc to encourage you to be yourself. I want you to encourage you to, to be yourself with a clear conscience. Um, have a clear conscience towards God. If you know tonight, I know this is for somebody, if you know tonight that there is something that's standing between you and God, if there is something that he has given you, he's given you an instruction, uh, maybe he's given you something, uh, said something to you, or, uh, something in your conscience that, that you know that, that you need to obey. Take care of that thing. Don't, don't let, don't sit on it another day. Um, you know, I remember years ago, um, I pulled up at my mailbox one day and as I was opening the mailbox, uh, getting the mail out, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I want you to go over to your next door neighbor here and talk to him about me. And I was like, oh God, no, not him. Why him? He doesn't want to hear anything I have to say. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm just getting in from work. I want to go home. The next day I came to my mailbox and I heard the Holy Spirit say, still want you to go over there to the neighbors. Uh, not today, Lord. I got stuff to do. You know, for months, I stopped listening until one day it became very clear to me. I wasn't receiving any more instructions. You know why? Because I had not obeyed the first one. And I finally said, God, I'm going over there and I'm going today. I went and knocked on his door and I said, you know, the Lord told me to come over here and talk to you. I don't know about what. Uh, I just know he told me to come talk to you. His first question was, am I going to die? <laughs> so I sat and shared Jesus with him. You know, when I pulled out of his driveway that day, the Lord gave me an instruction of someone else's home to go to. From that moment, my conscience was clear because I had obeyed the direction. I want my conscience to be clear toward men. If there's something that I know that I need to settle between another human being, then I need to take care of that. Now, not all things can be settled. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Even if you go and ask someone for forgiveness, don't, don't think that just because you go and ask someone for forgiveness that they're going to forgive you. Uh, but know that when you do, you're, you're going for the reason to have a clear conscience. Um, I won't allow though, listen to me closely. I will not allow condemnation. I will not allow ignorance or the opinions of other people to drive me into a debate, um, where I'm questioning myself. You've got to be sure of yourself today. You've got to be completely confident in who you are. Uh, you know, when, when you do what's right from the heart and you listen to your conscience, it develops inside of you a certain confidence that cannot be replaced or counterfeited. You know, you, you can walk on from a situation and know that I did what was right because it was right. I don't want to leave anything undone. So with closing this out tonight, uh, if you know that you've done something wrong against your conscience, corner quickly. That's what my spiritual father, Dr. Paul Kreitz, uh, taught me. He said, when you have know that you've made a mistake, don't lie and wallow in it, Todd. Corner quickly. Corner quickly. 
correct the wrong, go ask for forgiveness, and then move on. Your future is too important for you to be trapped in your past. I'm Dr. Todd Williams joining you tonight for Wisdom Talk, and I'm so glad that everyone is here with me. Hello, Bonnie. Good to see you. I know that you are Dr. Kreit's cousin, and he loves you dearly. Good to see you, Nancy, Jeff, uh, everyone that's here with me. I want to talk to you for just a minute about my spiritual father. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, they have moved Dr. Kreitz to another facility. And this is, this is a, a, a time for us to really be praying for him. Now's not the time to back off in prayer. This is a time to step up our prayers uh, for him. I know that they are starting uh, different rehab with him, uh, physical therapy, and you know, trying to get him moving around and doing things. Yes, uh, I I understand, Bonnie. I love him so, uh, and hopefully I'll get to meet you one day. He calls you cousin Bonnie all the time. <laughs> so, uh, I want you to continue to stand in prayer for my spiritual father. Um, you know, during this time of the holiday season, um, I want him to be so blessed, and I want him to be uh, completely cognitive of those blessings and uh, completely understanding how much uh, you love him, uh, how much you appreciate him. I know Dr. Angel has been reading uh, many of your comments to him and I know, I know his heart and I know that, that uh, he loves, he loves to interact with people. He loves people and he truly cares. Uh, you know, he, he is, uh, the most caring man that, that I have personally known in my almost 50 years here on the earth. Um, you know, he, if there's one thing that he's demonstrated to me in the last many years is how much he cared for me. Uh, it, it compared to no one else that I personally know, uh, other than my, my beautiful wife, of course. Uh, so <laughs> I want you to continue to stand in prayer for him and continue to stand in support. Um, you know, this book, this book just came out and this is 10 decisions of a wealthy king. And, uh, I worked with dad on this book and I, I had to read it because I formatted the inside of it. And I knew uh, the day that this all happened to him, I had emailed him and I told him, your books are on the way. And he didn't respond that day and I thought that to be odd. Uh, and they showed up at his home like a day or two later after all of this transpired. And he didn't get to look at, look at the book. I mean, he saw, you know, he saw the uh, e-proofs and everything that were done. Uh, and just a lovely cover. Man, this was a great cover. Uh, I didn't do this one. I believe one of the, the ladies that works for Dr. Murdoch designed this cover for him. But 10 Decisions of a Wealthy King. 10 Decisions of a Wealthy King. Uh, this is about King Solomon uh, and 10 of his uh, decisions that not only led to uh, his wealth, uh, but also the wisdom that he had uh, from God. Dr. Angel is offering this book. This is book number B14, and she's offering this book this month for a donation to Purpose International. Uh, if you donate $25 or more, she's going to send you two copies of this book just in time for Christmas, one to keep, one to give away as a gift. Isn't that lovely? It'll fit right in a stocking, more than likely, if you wanted to give it for a Christmas present. Um, so you can go to uh, Dr. Kreitz website, and that's paulkreitz.com. And there's, uh, I believe right under his picture, when you scroll down, there's a sow a seed button there. You can go and you can sow a seed to Purpose International. That is the uh, 501c3 um, ministry that oversees uh, his 
Wisdom House. Um, it's Purpose International is is the covering ministry there. Um, and you can hit the sow a seed button. If you sow $25 or more, please put in the note. If you do that through PayPal, please put in there that you want uh, two copies of 10 decisions. All right. Two copies of 10 decisions. Also want to encourage everyone who's been uh, with me tonight uh, to continue to support. Uh, be there for a support in this hour uh, for my spiritual father and Dr. Angel. Uh, not only in prayer, but financially. I know many of you are uh, monthly partners. Uh, many of you are $33 a month partners with Dr. Kreitz. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate everyone who sows and supports. It touches so many uh, different facets of things. Uh, the, the many spiritual sons that are under him, uh, the orphanage in uh, Moldova that they support, uh, and also in Malawi, the ministry there that's happening with Melissa Morrison. Um, so I really appreciate everything that you're doing with that. Also wanted to bring to your attention, if you have not read this book, this is a great, great book. Uh, I worked with my spiritual father on this book. Uh, the Apostles Have Landed. Isn't that a beautiful book? This was the one that came out just before this one in this year. If you don't understand apostolic ministry, uh, he has also got that on his website and would encourage you to get that book. Great book. Um, for this hour and for this moment, uh, Nancy, we, um, we know that he has been moved uh, in facilities uh, and he is more into a rehab facility at this moment uh, so that they can begin uh, the physical uh, rehab and uh, regaining speech and many of those capacities. Um, he has he has been talking. He, a couple of days ago, I was on video chat with him uh, and he said, hey to me. And he smiled real big. And I just, I said, don't worry about talking. I will do all the talking, all right? Uh, but I was glad to be able to talk with him for just a few moments. Hopefully I'll be able to get back down to Florida soon and see him. Um, I hope that will be possible. Listen, I'm glad you could be with me tonight uh, for Wisdom Talk. Um, you know, I would, I would encourage you tonight. I know that Dr. Angel goes back and watches these uh, and she reads the comments. I'll give you just a few moments before I close this out tonight. Uh, if you want to drop in the chat stream here, uh, some comments or something that, that you would like to say uh, to Bishop Kreitz, um, that would be awesome. Uh, I know that he would love to be able to hear from you and hear your heart toward them. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. If I'm not back on uh, before then, uh, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to 2021. 2020 has been the best year of my life. Uh, 2021, I believe, is going to be even better. And I believe the same for you. As I close this out tonight, listen to the voice of your conscience. The world is very loud right now, but you've got to be in agreement with your conscience and with the Spirit of God. I'm Dr. Todd Williams. I will see you soon. Good night.